Hey guys, today we are going to be talking all about high school. I am sharing with you my curriculum picks for our ninth grader. If you're new here, my name is Erin. I have four kids that I homeschool. My oldest was ninth grade this year. Then I have a seventh grader, a fifth grader, and a second grader. And I have done videos about all of their three curriculum picks that I will link in the description below if you wanna check those out. But today we're gonna to be talking about ninth grade or high school. A lot of the stuff that we're gonna be using really could apply to any high school level. I will have links to all of these resources that I'm gonna be sharing in the description below. The subjects that we're gonna talk about today that my ninth grader is going to be doing this year is language arts. I'm also going to be sharing what we're using for math this year as well as history and science and some electives. All right so let's dive into language arts first. Now this last summer I read a book called A Thomas Jefferson Education and it really shaped the way I was thinking about homeschooling as far as um, a leadership education component, training our kids to grow up to become leaders in the world, not just followers. And the concept in this book was really the idea of learning from really great literature through classics and mentorship and just really learning how to wrestle through these big ideas. And I definitely am incorporating some of that with all of our kids, but much more so with my ninth grader. He's definitely more on the gifted spectrum when it comes to um, some of his intellectual abilities. And so he's ready for a lot more um, than I think a lot of times a typical ninth grader might be. For language arts, we are gonna really be focusing a lot on British literature this year, which will tie into what we're gonna be learning with history. I'll share with you in a minute. Um, so I was able to find these study guides that I am using with my younger kids that I shared as well from Progeny Press. And these are literature guides that walk you through a book that you read. And then it teaches you a lot of like vocabulary content kind of questions, literary analysis, terminology questions that to help give the students a good understanding of writing techniques and how to use it. And then also like critical analysis questions it has in here that are designed to help students really consider um, the intellectual and moral and religious issues that are in the stories that they're reading and help them to balance that with scripture and that kind of stuff. So it's definitely, this is written from a more Christian perspective. Anyway, the first one that we're doing, obviously, is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This is a classic work of art by Charles Dickens. Um, I actually read this in a book club a few years ago, so I'm excited for him to go through it. I think he's gonna really enjoy this book. So that is the first one that we're gonna be doing. And then we're gonna go back in time a little bit and we're gonna study Julius Caesar from Shakespeare. So I bought four copies actually of this myself and then all three of my boys will have one of these and I'm gonna highlight lines and then we're gonna read through it like a play. I think it'll be really fun. I remember doing something similar when I was in high school and studied Julius Caesar. And then um, it has this study guide again from Progeny Press about the work of Julius Caesar um, that goes through the same types of things I talked about with the Tale of Two Cities. So we will do that one. And then I found a different company called Memoria Press that has a similar kind of format. This particular one that we're gonna be doing is the British Tradition Three. This is actually poetry. This covers poetry from the year 1785 to 1901, which again, will kind of tie in with our history. This has the actual works that they are reading, the poems and stuff. It has a student guide and then it also has a hefty teacher guide. So this tells us that students are guided to read and think through the grammar, logic, and rhetoric stages toward the essence of the story, the central proposition that gives the story its greatest meaning and expression. The guides feature helpful reading notes for background information, difficult words, vocabulary training, comprehensive questions, Socratic discussion questions, interaction with salient quotes and literary and rhetorical devices that are in there for sophisticated literary literary analysis and future study. So I am excited for him to do this and for us to kind of talk about them, have some great discussion, which I think is again, central to that Thomas Jefferson type of education of really wrestling through these works of literature and kind of trying to draw a deeper understanding out of what they were saying and how we can apply that to our life and all of those kind of things. My thought is instead of doing this all together, we'll probably do one poem a week or two, depending on how many is actually in here. And then 
the rest of his days he will spend a little bit of time either on the Julius Caesar or the Tale of Two Cities and then we will purchase another literature guide to go through after we get through these two. I just kind of wanted to see the format of the memory of press versus the progeny press and kind of compare the two and then decide what we're going to do for the rest of the year going forward but again we would pick up on since we're on this British literature kind of mind wave <laughs> that I'd find another work by a British author. The other component of language arts that we are still working on with him is writing and he has actually been working on writing his own book about the American Revolution and so his writing component, um, I don't have a curriculum for that, I'm just letting him continue to write. So he will be finishing up the book that he's writing over the course of this coming year and that that is his writing practice. So after he writes a chapter, then I generally sit with him and read through it myself. I will make any notations or corrections and then we kind of talk about um, grammar, sentence structure, how to improve things, make things better. You know, had you thought about this or can we incorporate some of this here? And just really helping to improve his writing. Um, so I don't necessarily have a curriculum for that. We're just kind of winging it. <laughs> We're doing it on our own because that is what he's into. And that's the beauty with homeschooling is we really can tailor make our kids' education in a natural learning process for them to really own it, for them to make it something that they are like bought, sold, like all in on if it's something that they're interested in. So that's definitely my MO and that's how we're continuing on through high school. I'm gonna be letting him work a little bit more on that book subject and he really would love to self-publish it. So we're gonna actually probably have a credit that he'll be doing in entrepreneurship. And so he, I'm gonna give him that project of really researching how you go about publishing a book, um, what goes into that, figuring out cover design layout, how to do all of those things, um, some marketing, stuff like that, um, that go along with the book. And then we'll be working through that together and figure out how to actually get it out there. He's super excited about the idea of having like an actual book in print with his name on it. And it'd be so fun. Um, so that's going to be kind of part of that component of entrepreneurship. And then we got him this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is a classic. It's been around for a long time. Henry Ford, Rockefeller, Roosevelt, Alexander Graham Bell, lots of other people have founded their successes on principles that are in this book. There's a lot of really great ideas about business. He's also going to go through the audiobook called The E-Myth Revisited. That'll tie in, I think, perfectly with learning just some business strategies, some entrepreneurship, that kind of thing. And then moving on to math, we, as I talked about with my other kids, have switched to Saxon and we are going to be doing Algebra 1 for him for ninth grade. And again, my reasoning with switching to Saxon is really for him, he really wanted to have something that was a little bit more cut and dry. Like he just really wanted to be able to open the book, read the lesson, do the work and be done and move on rather than have some of the extra bells and whistles that teaching textbooks has and there has been for a while a little bit of concern about the the levels of teaching textbooks not really lining up with say saxon or other math curriculum that, that was out there i really wanted to make sure my kids have a really strong foundation in math especially once they get to high school and i don't want us to be having to play catch up and so that's where i kind of felt like we were we switched last year about midway through the year from teaching textbooks to Saxon and just for example he had been using Algebra 1 with teaching textbooks had gotten halfway through that and then when we did the placement test for switching to Saxon he had to go back to Algebra 1 half which is basically their pre-algebra program and essentially start at the very beginning of that so Algebra 1 on teaching textbooks level was kind of like pre-algebra on Saxon level. And again, I, I think teaching textbooks can be a really great program for a lot of people. It was definitely what we needed for the time that we were doing it. The other element that we're using with Saxon that makes it a lot more manageable for me as a homeschooler of four children <laughs> is that we are using Nicole, the math lady's online resources for all of my kids that are doing Saxon. So she basically has online lessons where you can go watch the lecture online and then the kids open their textbook and do the problems and then they enter their answers online and it does all of the grading for you. 
keeps all of the records and everything so that you don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. Okay, so then moving on to history, I've talked about several times in our curriculum now, we are gonna be finishing up cycle one from A Gentle Feast. We started this partway through the year last year, so we hadn't finished it all the way. So we're just kind of gonna be wrapping up what we hadn't gotten to and then moving on with a little bit more of just kind of our own stuff over the rest of the year. In this book, she has you reading through Winston Churchill's A History of the English Speaking Peoples level or volume one and volume two. So we're gonna pick up with that and just do this on our own. So this is volume three, which covers the year, it's called the Age of Revolution. So it covers the years 1688 to 1812. So this again ties in perfectly because it starts with England's advance to world power, the first British empire, the years of the American Revolution, and the Napoleonic Wars. And that's something that my son has really been wanting to learn more about. This will tie in perfectly, I think, with where he is at interest-wise, as well as just chronologically it fits as well. And so that's why I chose the British literature and that kind of stuff to go along with reading Winston Churchill, learning about the French Revolution, Tale of Two Cities is about the French Revolution, all of the things, right? I just really like to try to, when it's possible, kind of meld different subjects together as homeschoolers and be able to make those connections. I really feel like that gives a richer education when you can tie in um, artwork and literature and actual history and maps and geography that kind of fit in all with the same stuff. It just gives that well-rounded knowledge. And so I think this is going to be a great fit for us for this year. So then as well as this for history, he is also researching some other books that he wants to get about um, the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars, that kind of time period. So we will probably be adding another book or two to his list that he'll be reading for history. We just haven't identified what those are quite yet. For science, the wind is picking up. Sorry if there's a little extra noise here. Um, for science, we are actually, this is working out perfect because I had purchased this last year when he was in eighth grade, but it has biology in here for ninth grade for this year. So we're gonna be following the plan that she has in this um, curriculum for ninth grade biology. So in A Gentle Feast for biology, she has you going through biology 101. This is biology according to the days of creation. So it has video lectures that you watch that are designed for high school age kids. And it has a guide in here about how you can use it for course accreditation if you wanna do that. Um, I have heard from people that this probably isn't quite enough as, as a full course on its own, which is great because she has plans for you in here. <laughs> she has you go through. This book is called Microbe Hunters. It's about the first scientists, bacteriologists, doctors, medical technicians who are discovering microbes and inventing vaccines and all of those kind of things. So this is a great component to learn more of. And then she also has you do this living science study guide that has you read through the book, Men, My Microscopes and Living Things. It covers things like the principles and tools of biological study, food webs, life processes, it has some anatomy, adaptation, natural selection, extinction, cell theory, simple genetics and reproduction are all in here along with some activities and labs. It tells you what to read and to notebook about um, so it's definitely all of this doing things in a more Charlotte Mason style, which was really my goal in trying to find something for science for high school. I really am not a fan of textbooks. I think they're really boring. <laughs> and especially once you get to the high school level, they can be really, really dry. So I wanted to try to find a different approach to doing high school science. And I am excited. I think this is going to be a great fit. And that, especially for my son, who is just not interested in this particular science at all, I'm okay with that. I don't, I'm not concerned with him having like the super high level knowledge of biology. I think a basic foundation in biology is important. I think he's going to get that plus some, but in a much more interesting format than reading a textbook. I will let you know how it goes because I'm sure there will be some of you that are interested in hearing how that works. All right, so moving on to some electives. He is going to be doing Introduction to Logic by Jason Lyle. This is from Masterbooks. He's actually going to be taking a class with other high school students 
and a former high school teacher that has turned homeschooler is going to be teaching it. So this will be something that he has a class once a week with other students. He has his assignment that he does his reading and worksheets and that kind of stuff at home. I will be checking his work at home and then he'll do the tests and things like that in class but they will have all the discussion that kind of stuff there in this book you learn about logic and the christian worldview and the biblical basis for the laws of logic if faith is contrary to reason informal logical fallacies and more so it's not just logic it does kind of cover some apologetics kind of stuff so i think this is going to be a great class for him he is like really into history obviously he's writing this book right but he loves politics, economics, all of those kind of things. So we're going to be doing economics this year is another component of his um, school year this year. And we've got a little bit of a stack here. <laughs> He's going to go through the money mystery. This one is about the subject of velocity and is kind of like this whole series about economics and law and politics and liberty written from the perspective of the founding fathers which is right up my son's alley he loves the writing style in there the guy's a little bit sarcastic and he's super conservative um <laughs> and then following up with that one is the clipper ship strategy it's about like business and investments so this kind of ties in with entrepreneurship Kind of stuff as well it's kind of one of those crossover books i think it's supposed to be covering like government and law and economics that kind of thing and then he's going to be reading the law by frederick bastiat and this was written right after the second french revolution in the mid 1800s and he wrote it to kind of combat this idea of socialism that was propping up in france during that time period and raise the question about what about liberty instead so this is written from the more liberty perspective of what the law is supposed to do and the kind of the foundations of government and and economics again ties in with that and then we have economics in one lesson by henry hazlitt which is about the shortest and surest way to understand basic economics there's a lot of stuff that i don't know very much about so it will be good for me to go through some of this with him as well but he's really into this kind of stuff he's done a couple of hillsdale's online courses. He did one called Supply Side Economics already that is kind of going to apply to this credit, which again is where I got this idea is that he was just doing that on his own. He saw it and thought it was interesting, so he just did it on his own at night, like on his own whim. And so we're kind of building this credit around something that he is already interested in and had already started pursuing on his own, which along that lines again, we got basic economics by Thomas Sowell. And this is one that he had wanted to buy and read this giant book that's supposed to be kind of very foundational to conservative perspective of economics. I don't know if he will read this entire thing over the year, but we might kind of tie some things together and figure out concepts that are in here and then learn a little bit more about them in here just let him pick and choose some of these chapters he's already started reading this on his own over the summer so it's something that he will either finish up or we'll just kind of work out of over the rest of this school year i'm looking at all of this now and realizing how much he's going to be reading which is quite a lot this year probably a lot of this stuff could apply to any level in high school um that's just where we're at because that's where he's at and i'm really big on working where our children are at not pigeonholing them if they're ready to move on to bigger and better things then that is amazing that's the beauty of homeschooling and so that's where we're at with our son for ninth grade this coming year i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit that thumbs up button below and i'll see you next time thanks for watching bye